assisted category. And in this category, you can use other tools to help you find new stations to work. So you can use the DX cluster, the internet, internet spotting, um, whatever uh, the skimmers, software tools, whatever you have you can, that can help give you information about where stations are. So this is like going hunting or fishing, but someone already tells you where the fish are or tells you where the, where, where the animals that you're looking for are. So that's why there's two categories, and one of them is very much about the operator, and then the other one is about the operator plus the assistance from these other tools. And most contests <coughs> have a specific <coughs> rule about whether you can have assistance or not, or whether it's two categories. Why are you? Uh, but some contests just put everything together, so you have to read the rules to know uh, what the particular contest allows. But it's very important if you use the outside assistance that you claim the correct category. <laughs> so this is where it gets difficult. Here's the definition of assistance in one of the contest rules. It's very long. <coughs> and uh, you kind of have to be a lawyer or a judge to be able to understand all the pieces of this rule. But the most important thing is that if you're in the assisted category, you're using some tool that's telling you there is a station on a certain frequency so that you know you can go there and find them. You don't have to do the hunting on your own. So now I want to talk about, now that we're talking about single operator contesting, let's talk about the steps that you need to go through to prepare for a contest. Before the contest starts, it's very important to read the rules and to understand the story. Each contest or each competition has different rules. In some competitions, maybe the contest is only four hours long or 24 hours long or 48 hours long. So it's good. And some competitions, you get point, different points depending on if, uh, who you talk to or you have different multipliers maybe based on the number of countries or prefixes or something like that. So you need to understand the story. And scoring comes from the points from making contacts multiplied times the multiplier. Usually, let's say, the number of countries that you talk to. So if you understand the story, now you can start thinking about what can I do to make the biggest score possible? Is it more important to just work and talk to as many stations as possible, or am I better to uh, to look for rare countries or rare multipliers? And one of the ways that you can do this is to look at the past results. Look at the scores from the year before or from the years before and see how did the winners do it? Or how did other people in your area operate the contest? Where did their score come from? Uh, and you start to develop a plan. So, next slide. As you start to look at the scores and understand how things work, the next question is many, each of the contests has different categories. So we talked about single operator, assisted and unassisted, but also there may be categories for operating only on one band, or uh, perhaps multi-operator, which we'll talk about later. So you want to think about it. Okay, you want to look at your station. Inside is my station. Do I have antennas for all bands or do I have only antennas for one band? Maybe you look at the competition. What are my, uh, what are the other stations in my area doing? Uh, maybe on 15 meters, you decide you, that there's always a big station that wins. Maybe you should try a different category, low power instead of high power. what category you want to do. Once you've chosen the category, you have to decide, am I trying to win or am I just having fun? So if you look at a marathon race, uh, like the Boston Marathon or the New York Marathon or any of the big marathon races, there are always some guys at the front that they're almost professionals. This is what they do for their job, they run very fast, and there's always this group right at the top. But then 
there are many, many people behind them that are running just for fun or just to accomplish some personal goal. And radio contesting and digital <coughs> operator category is the same way. You have the choice to decide. Are you, uh, are you trying to win? Or are you just doing something for your own goal, your own satisfaction? The, the best thing to do is to find someone else, uh, perhaps uh, in, your, in your region or uh, someone else in, in Brazil or someone in the same town who has a similar station and compete directly with them. It's much more fun when you can uh, compete directly against someone you know and try to compete with someone who might be uh, far away in a completely different situation. So as you're setting this goal, are you trying to win the world or win the new record? That's one level. But maybe you just want to win a certificate. So then you look at the categories, you look at the competition, you try to find a place where you think, okay, I can win uh, uh, an award, something to put on the wall to say, okay, I, I did a good job in this contest. I know I'm talking too fast, so I'll probably slow down a little bit. So now you know the scoring, you know the category you want to operate in, you look at the past results, it's time to make a plan. Uh, just like the marathon runners, they look at the course, they decide how fast they want to try to run, where the uphills are, where the downhills are, they look at the weather. The same thing is true in radio contesting. There are some times of the day when it's when you can work contacts very easily. That's like running downhill, you can go very fast. There are other times during the day where you know it's going to be very difficult. That's like running uphill. So but to win the contest, you know you have to do the entire course. You have the uphill part and the downhill part. That's part of the game. And understanding that helps you know as you go along how you're doing. How are you doing compared to your goal? How are you doing compared to your plan? One of the things to also look at, in addition to just the scores from the past, is the propagation forecast. Because if you, you, you want to see, are the conditions going to be very good or above normal, or are the conditions going to be lower? And that will also maybe change your plans by going into the contest. You may realize that in this contest, it's, going, it's the same as running a marathon when it's very cold, <laughs> or it's, gonna run, it's going to be very hot. So you, just, you change your strategy depending on what you think the conditions will be. And then, like any race, you adjust your strategy as you're going along in the, in the contest as things are happening. Now, the marathon race only lasts about two or three or six hours, depending on your skill. But in a radio contest, the contest time is usually 24 or 48 hours. And once the clock starts at the beginning of the contest, you can make points, you make contacts, you're, you're building your score. You always have the choice to walk away, to go do something else, to go watch television. But your score does not go up if you are not sitting in front of the radio talking to people. So. Once the clock starts, you have the choice of what to do. This also means that if you need to take a break to go to sleep, that also is hurting your score. So you want to think very carefully as part of your plan about when to sleep. So you want to sleep during those periods where conditions where maybe it's very difficult to make contact. So instead of running uphill and making yourself very tired, you may decide that it's actually better to sleep during that time 
and then be more awake during the periods where you, it's easy to make contacts and you can go very fast. What, I've done a number of competitions where I stay awake for uh, more than 45 hours. So 45 or 46 or 48 hours non-stop radio, no, no sleeping at all. And the most important thing to do that is you have to be a little crazy. You also have to want to win very badly. So the same as the marathon runners, the ones at the front, they know it is going to hurt. And they run anyway. The same thing here. So the things that I do to help me accomplish that is I get as much sleep as possible before the contest, in the week before the contest. The more rested you are, the easier it is to, to the easier it is to keep going. If you're very tired when the contest starts, it gets to the middle of the night and you, you just want to quit or fall asleep. When you're tired, it's very hard to think. It's easy to give up. So the more rested, the better. You want to obviously plan the times when you want to take a break. But another thing, in sleep, uh, there's a rhythm in your sleep pattern. And it's usually about 90 minutes long. So if you fall asleep, every 90 minutes you'll be starting to come up to wake up again, and then you go back down to sleep again. So if you, if you set your clock so that when you fall asleep, you'll wake up 90 minutes later, you'll be closest to waking up, and it will make it much easier. If you try to wake up at the bottom, so at the 45 minutes, at the bottom of your sleep cycle, it is very difficult. I woke up, uh, I tried to wake up after one hour sleep one time, and um, I, I was, I woke up, I'm sitting at the radio, but nothing is making any sense. It's a little bit like being a, a drunk or something like that. You're just sitting there and nothing is working <laughs> in your brain. So uh, these 90 minute periods are very, uh, a very good way to help. And if you, if 90 minutes is too short, then sleep 180 minutes. Sleep, you know, a multiple of 90 minutes. So it will really help when you wake up. The other thing to do, and this may be very difficult in a country where everyone drinks coffee, uh, but uh, I don't use any caffeine before, in the days before the contest, and I, I say taking a coffee or caffeine until on Sunday, on the second day when I'm very tired, then it helps me uh, uh, keep going a little more. <coughs> So I mentioned this before, when the clock starts, it's your choice, but you need to keep going. Keep, uh, in our, our contest club, uh, there's a saying that you have to keep your butt in the chair to make contact. So if you are not in the chair and in front of the radio, your score is not improving, and the other guy, your competition, will keep going and he'll pass you. And that's why it's so good to have a, a local uh, that you're competing against because uh, that will give you some motivation to know that if I'm asleep, the other guy is not sleeping. Maybe you'll change your mind. For me, when I'm operating, I'm always thinking the next contact may make a difference. So, okay, I finished this one, I have to go find the next one. And then I have to find the next one. And uh, it, it, don't think of it as 48 hours, think of it as what am I doing for the next minute? And for the next minute and the next visit. Okay, I have to find the next contact by whatever means. So that's the way you break the race down into a form that it's easy to understand, easy to follow. Now, as you're operating, and if you're very tired, and there's lots of interference uh, from other stations on the band, you have to remember that 
Sean Testing is a game not only about talking to people in other parts of the world, but it's about accuracy. You have to copy the calls correctly, you have to copy the information correctly. And so accuracy is very important. If you spend um, two minutes to make a QSO, to make a contact, and you don't write the call down correctly, you lose that QSO. You also lose a penalty QSO because of a mistake. So your score actually goes backwards every time that you make an error in your law. So, so focusing on accuracy and improving your is very important to keeping your score once you've made it. And even if it means asking a station to repeat the information or repeat their call sign again, it's worth it to avoid the penalty from making a mistake. Another thing to remember, just like the marathon race, is that everyone is experiencing the same conditions that you are. So as you're going through the contest, they're also having a lot of interference. They're also tired. They're also seeing good conditions or bad conditions on the bands, or good or bad propagation. And so you can't think, if your score is not keeping up with your goals, that doesn't mean your score is bad. It just means your score is not keeping up with your goal. And maybe you need to adjust the goal, but you want to keep going. Because the other, the other stations may also have a lower score than they expected. And often in, in difficult conditions, it's the stations that keep going that, that will win, even over a better station or a better operator, just because they have the motivation uh, to keep going. So you just have to remember, everyone, all of you are, everyone is in the same, is in the same race at the same time. Now I'm going to talk about something that's a little more advanced. When we talk about single operator contesting, there's one operator, one human, and we have the clock is constantly moving. And the goal is to find the next contact. So one way that you can help improve your score is to use two radios. So you have two ears. So you put one radio in each ear. And now you can listen to two things at the same time. And this is, as a name, it's called a single operator two radio, SO2R. And what this allows you 